Hello everybody, I am filming another video today so I'm not sure if you will see this Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow look first or this faves and fails first. I don't even want to call it a faves and fails because all these concepts are so saturated on YouTube. But basically that's what it's going to be today. I have some things that I've been loving and I have some things that actually didn't work out so I'm going to talk about them today. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's start off with a fairly obvious one because I think I've spoken about this on my channel already. The One Size Turn Up The Base Press Powder Foundation. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. And if you saw my This or That video, you will see that this has actually taken over the place of my Charlotte Tilbury. Whilst I use them for different things at the moment, when I need to refill my Charlotte Tilbury's, I will just be refilling it with the one size powder. But what I like about this specifically is the shade range and the fact that it goes light enough for me to use under my eyes. Makeup by Ariel showed us that he is using this as an under eye powder and it is chef's kiss. It is so Good. It's less drying than the Charlotte Tilbury, so that is the second reason that I love it. Um, it makes my under eyes look the best they've looked in a long time. This mixed with the KVD concealer and a touch of the NARS Radiant Creamy is the go-to at the moment. I'm loving it, I'm living it, I'm breathing it, and it's more cost-effective than the Charlotte Tilbury as well. So this is my first absolute favorite, absolute knock it out of the park can't get enough of it. The packaging kind of does it for me too. That chrome ruby red really is quite pretty. Um, you, you do get your fingerprints all over it though, but when I pulled it out of the box, the initial like, gasp of how pretty that chrome red was, was quite the experience. And I love a good like consumer shopping experience. Okay, next is an older product. I'm going to love to talk about older products on my channel because I've just decided I actually buy things late. I like to wait for reviews. I like to wait to see how much people really love, love it and if they continue to love it before I buy it. Some things I might buy a little bit quicker. But overall, that's my general shopping attitude, if you will. So the next was the Patrick Tarr Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in the shade She's That Girl. Now this is just such a pretty pink. Look at it, it is like just, I love pink. Pink is my favorite color and it's my favorite shade of pink is really this pink. But it's not just the fact that it's my favorite color. This is so flattering on my face because it's a slightly warmer pink. I find this type of pink to be extremely flattering to my skin tone. And then not to mention the formula is just flawless and I love the fact that you actually get two formulas. So if you're not familiar with these blushes, you actually, it's actually designed to put the powder down first and then the cream over the top. But I prefer to just mix and match at, based on how I'm feeling on the day. Sometimes I only use the powder, um, but on a more natural day, I will actually put the cream over the top because the cream makes it a little bit more dewier and a little bit more skin light. But if I'm going full glam, I actually like that really matte velvet type blush effect. So... I love this. I highly recommend it to you. It just makes me feel, <laughs> makes me feel giddy. And we've got the rose gold chrome packaging on this too, which is lovely. But again, fingerprints. I've noticed so many brands are going that chrome, that chrome way. Okay, the next one is another blush. It's another pink blush. Sue me if you will. This one is an older one too. It is the Hourglass Ethereal Glow Blush. Okay, if I had to pick one blush formula, that would be my favorite. It is 100% the Hourglass blush formula because it makes you look so diffused. It makes you look like, what pores? Where? Non-existent. Don't have those. I'm inhumane. I'm an alien. That's the vibe. It also makes you look so useful because there's some sort of like technology in this that really creates that like lit from within type vibe. So... I love this. I have had lots of other shades for a long time, but I've really been getting into pink blush lately. So this is just a beautiful, cool tone, baby pink. It's so flattering. Oh, I just couldn't speak highly enough of this blush. I'm obsessed. I love it. I live it. I breathe it. So happy with this purchase. And I was actually, I took a long time with this purchase because I actually do want to forewarn you. I did return one of these 
because the marbling was out and the lady at Mecca explained to me that you would dig down and no matter which way you should get an even ratio of marbling but I got one that was like majority white and I took it back I just was not willing to take that risk and then I got one that had some better marbling on it and I didn't even try the one that had the seemingly off ratio marbling but yeah I'm so glad that I fought hard to find one that was the perfect marbling because oh I love it I want to eat it so the next product I've been loving is another makeup by Ariel recommendation I didn't really trust him at first because makeup artists on that level are just paid a pretty penny and for some reason I don't think they have to disclose for some reason or well, they do and they just don't I don't know but and he also talks about his friends products a lot and I'm just like I don't know are you just talking about it because your friends this actually isn't one of his friends brands but it is the Sephora collection blush in the shade flirt it up this is stunning this is the blush I have on today it is again slightly more on the warmer side rather than a super cool tone but it is so flattering it's just and it's also such a smooth velvety formula honestly it's amazing some people keep saying that it's like so good for the price and I was like this was still $26 like it's not cheap <laughs> so this is a great great blush it went viral for good reason it's fantastic I love it he actually uses it to like underpaint which I found interesting which is where you put the powder blush on when your foundation is still a little bit tacky wet not set down I haven't tried that yet I would like to so I will and I will post back but for now I just use it as a regular over the top blush and I love it so that is fave numero tre so my next fave is actually something I've already talked about on my channel but I wanted to discuss a little bit further it is the NARS light reflecting foundation now my review on this was a little bit mixed ultimately it didn't have as much coverage as I would like but I did really love the finish Someone commented on my video about this foundation saying, have you mixed it with the sheer glow? And I was like, no, I don't really think you would get that much out of it being that this one has less coverage. Now, whilst I don't enjoy mixing them, what I enjoy doing is one thin layer of the light reflecting and then one thin layer of the NARS sheer glow. Perfection. You get the best of both worlds. You get the beautiful finish that this one has, but you get the coverage that this one has so very kind of expensive combo but I have very much been enjoying mixing those my next phase are some brushes which I've already spoken about on my channel as well but this is the Patrick Ta contour brush I actually just stocked up on a second one so that when this one is wet and washing I still have a brush that's how much oh I just hit myself in the face with it that's how much I feel like this is imperative to my routine now. I love to use it with the ABH cream bronzer in the shade Amber. Um, and I will link the video down below where I really go in depth on how I use this. But I am just loving this brush. It is now a staple in my collection. Highly recommend this to you. Okay, so my next favorite is going to be some products that I've definitely spoken about before. But it's just sort of the way that I apply them a little bit differently. So my favorite concealer now, I can't believe I'm going to say this, is the KVD Good Apple Concealer. It is a hair under the amount of coverage that I actually require though. But much alike these two, it has the finish that I really, really need, which is it is the concealer that creases the least. Note that I don't say it doesn't crease because the only way I could claim that is if I didn't have creases under my eyes, for which case I do. So I love to use this concealer because it is the concealer that makes my under eyes look the best. But to cover up and high and you don't want to highlight these areas, but you want to brighten this area, right? Well, I do. I think it looks flattering. I think it looks pretty because I have quite sallow, um, hollow, bluish under eyes. So what I do is I apply my KVD everywhere, including T-zone. But then I actually go over the very, um, the bits where I need the extra coverage. So here, 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 and here with my NARS Radiant Creamy in the shade Chantilly. I actually hated this concealer for a long time. But what I've realized is I like it on its own not set or I like it like how I just described with this as my main concealer but then this in the very highlighted points 
This not only gives me the extra coverage that I need, but it also just brings some dimension to the areas that I need it to. So highly recommend giving those two a try. I'm sorry that I'm such a mixer, but I'm also not sorry because the outcome is so beautiful. And if you try it, I'm sure you will agree. Actually, I'm also going to throw a little props to my Jaclyn Hill palette. I've been using this so much this month and I've actually done a tutorial on the look that's on my eyes now. I don't know if that'll go up before or after this video. So I do want to give a quick shout out to this. I want to make sure that in my faves and fails that I always talk about products that I'm actually really using and products that I feel like people try and make these videos only about new products. I really, if it's my mission in life, it's going to be to make the beauty community not so much about new releases. I don't know why our, nearly all our content is focused around new releases. So I'm probably gonna fail on that journey, but whilst I try, <laughs> I'm gonna mention the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe Palette Volume 1 because I've done so many amazing looks with this this month. Um, this is an amazing formula. It's an amazing color story. And what I'm actually really enjoying at the moment is palettes that are intuitive. You can hop in there, not have to think that hard, not really even have to try that hard and come out with a banging look. And that's what this palette gives to me. That is my little fave so far as eyeshadow palettes go. It's definitely been the Jaclyn Hill Volume 1 palette this month or this lately, as of lately, because I'm not doing these monthly. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's go into some products that didn't work out for me. So the number one, you can see it's still in its package because I am returning it as soon soon as I can, which is actually going to be tomorrow morning. But this is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I'm harsh on concealers. It's hard to impress me with concealers. I'd say 95% of the concealers I try I don't like. I've said this a million times, my under eyes are just um, So, I got the shade O2W, but <laughs> this made my under eyes look so bad. Oh my gosh. It catched and caught onto dry patches that I swear I have never seen on my eyeballs before. You know how sometimes um, in the inner corner of your eye, it can skip a little bit? I got that from like here to here, like a skipping type thing. And I was like, how did this happen? This has never happened to me before. It like left my face. At the two and a half hour mark, it looked like I had been wiping my face or like sitting on my face like this. Like the concealer had quite legitimately diluted. I just was like, what is going on here? I had set it with powder. I had used primer. I used the same routine that I would use with any other concealer. And I was just like, how the hell can so many people like this product? It, oh, oh. I'm offended by it like I'm still in shock what this did to me it was so bad I literally will be skipping skipping into Mecca tomorrow to return that horrible 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 okay so next product I've actually already gotten rid of because I did not love them and the first one was the elf poreless putty primer so I shall put a photo right here even though I'm fairly sure we all know what it looks like because it's so viral I have a feeling that I have an attitude with this one because it didn't get me excited as a product in general. But then second, I have a feeling, so I'm combo. I'm dry, but I get pimples. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of both and I do get um, an oily T-zone, but nothing, nothing enough to consider my skin as oily. It's definitely combination. So I feel like the e.l.f. Paulus Putty Primer is perhaps just more for people with truly oily skin. Um, so I have a feeling that that product just wasn't for me. I felt like it didn't do anything for the appearance of my skin or my pores. And it just felt a little bit thick and a little bit heavy and I didn't love it. I don't really love very silicone-y, blurring, pore-feeling primers in the first place. So I just don't think it was for me. Then the next one was actually the Nymph Glaze Highlight Cream Highlight by Huda Beauty. I was sampling it as an overall highlight, but I did end up trying it as a spot highlight underneath foundation. I didn't love it for the price. Then this is where I, it's so unfortunate because I really want to support Huda Beauty. And I really do actually admire her as a businesswoman. I think for the most part, she gets it pretty right. But all her products just look so exciting they get a good amount of hype 
but every time I actually try and use one, I never end up liking it. So I think that might be the last pot product that I purchased from them because I'm nearly always disappointed and it's just like, why do I keep doing this to myself? Like I never end up loving them. So I have got rid of that one because I don't like to keep makeup in my collection that I have zero intention of using. So that one is a gone girl already. The final product that was just like a meh, I'm still, I sort of want to keep this, but I'm also like, I should just return it. I want to keep it because it's so aesthetically pleasing to my eyeballs, but it's the NARS Thrill Blush. It just didn't give it to me. I thought everyone was saying it was a dupe for the Dior. And again, I mentioned this in my this or that video, but it just, it just didn't. It was, it took a lot of product to layer up and get a nice blushy effect. It also ended up looking a little bit warm on my skin, whereas the Dior Rosy Glow really holds that bubblegum pink shade. I found, I found once I applied this one to my skin, it really lost that vibrancy. So I'll probably return this one, but I don't hate it. I just think Dior Rosy Glow is better. So I don't need to have both. And I, I question how much I will use this. And I don't think I should just keep it in my collection because it's aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> But yeah, so that is the last product that I... That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed a little phase and fails from me. Have I don't really think I have much more to add there. <laughs> have a great week, weekend, wherever you are, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!